Scientifically, what would be the best strategy to win the Hunger Games? The most excellent question. Preface, if I truly ended up in a Hunger Games, I'd probably pee my pants and cry, getting myself killed within the first 30 seconds. I don't think I have it in me to survive long. This answer assumes that I'm not a wuss. Another note, I base this strategy on someone like me. I wouldn't be a career, nor very powerful. Strategy depends so much on the individual's strengths and weaknesses. As an all-around mediocre physical being, this is the strategy I'd take. I'd pretend to be mediocre during training to make myself forgettable. Not too good, nor too bad. I'd fade into the background. If you excel, such as Katniss, you make yourself a target. If you prove completely incompetent, you also make yourself a target. I'd focus on making people forget about me. Mediocre interview. Lame performance for the game makers. Snoozy training. You'll see why I picked this strategy. For the first few days, my main strategy would be hiding and gathering weapons. Modified Thresh slash Fox face strategy. I'd get the heck out of dodge as soon as the bell rang. Why? Too much risk of things going wrong. A dagger or sword gone astray, goodbye Christina. Nice to know you. I'd find a hiding spot a good distance away, but not too far. My priorities as far as location goes would be Water, number one priority. You die faster from dehydration than from hunger. Food, I'd focus on nuts, leaves and such. If I could, I'd get some fish and animals for nourishment. Proximity to other tributes, I'd try to stay somewhat close, but not too close. Why? To get weapons. One downside of the Thresh slash Fox face strategy is the absence of weapons. I'd see if I could steal another tribute's weapons, either before or after death. I wouldn't ally with anyone. Katniss lucked out big time with Rue and Peter. These two proved trustworthy. Most tributes would stab you in the back as soon as you slept. Of course, doing this alone has its downfalls. I wouldn't get much sleep or food. I think, hope, it'd be worth it. If there is an opportunity to destroy the career's food supply, I take it. I, however, wouldn't endanger myself too much to do so. I have other plans for the little careers. Once the number of tributes dwindled to single digits, I'd use the surprise element to eliminate the remaining tributes. Most likely, mostly careers would remain at this point. I'd wait until the careers start turning on each other. One major weakness of career tributes is their dependency on each other. They stick together until the end. Their tenuous bonds fray as soon as they have few non-careers to kill. Once they turn on each other, they will separate. Careers would know each other's strengths and weaknesses, proving formidable opponents to each other. I'd wait until the victors emerged from these fights. Of course, this part may come down to some luck and the weapons that I've hopefully gathered. Then again, what isn't about luck? Victor's village, here I come. Or not. I based my strategy on art of war. When strong, avoid them. If of high morale, depress them. Seem humble to fill them with conceit. If at ease, exhaust them. If united, separate them. Attack their weaknesses. Emerge to their surprise. Sun Tzu. Don't do anything to draw attention to yourself. Even though the other tributes aren't allowed to view your strengths at the training center, the score you get gives them an idea of your capabilities. Once you enter the arena, don't worry about a weapon. As far as I could tell, the bow and arrows were the closest thing to a firearm. So most combat will be close quarters. Worry about getting food, water, shelter. A good, strong log will be good enough to defend yourself against most weapons. If possible, get the high ground. The Katniss slash Shrew strategy. Use the Fox Face strategy. Find a place to hide that's in close proximity to your main competition. Stay hidden as long as you can and hope that the other combatants take each other out. As harsh as it sounds, hope the strongest take out the weakest. 
It's one thing to kill a 16-year-old Korea but it's different to take out a 12-year-old from one of the outer districts. At some point, the game's makers will force you into combat. So above all, you need to be devoid of all emotion when it comes to the other combatants. Don't become friends or allies with anyone else. At some point, it will be either you or them. A combination of the Katniss slash Foxface slash Thresh slash Rue strategy seems most effective, at least until the games makers get tired of watching you walk around the woods for days. For someone who is weak, the strategy is essentially the one that Rue used. Rue's fatal flaw was that she got caught up with Katniss. I'm hard to catch. If they can't catch me they can't kill me. So don't count me out. Rue. I would say the strategy that will give you the best chance. During training, focus on learning survival techniques like how to pick the right plants to eat and how to build a fire. During interviews, try to endear yourself to the viewers. This provides an incentive for the game maker to keep you alive longer, and increases the chances of getting gifts. Run from the cornucopia away from other contestants. Pick what you can on the way. Stay hidden and survive and allow the other stronger players to pick each other off. Ally with another stronger player midway through the game, trading whatever services you can for protection. Wait for the right time and chance to either kill your ally, or be killed by him slash her. Be prepared to commit suicide when faced with a painful death. Rue died because she got herself into attacking the careers. If Katniss and Rue had stayed hidden, she could have survived longer. Essentially, this is also the strategy that Foxface used and she survived till fourth place in the book. She dies because she made a mistake of eating the wrong berries, otherwise she might have survived till the end.